Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the next uh, EDH Takes tier list video. Today we're doing Gruel. I'm Spencer Cook. I'm Elijah Samuelson. And uh, we're excited to be back, right Eli? Yeah. Not Gruel, then die. The classic. Words to live by. Yeah, so a couple things before we start. Just our, our classic disclaimer of... Um, the way that we do the tier lists isn't an exact science. It's the, our, our criteria are um, we, we factor in a lot of things, including the average deck, the best way the deck can be built, a lot of those sort of things. It's not you know exact science. Um, we're not infallible as well, Eli. Yeah, as with most tier lists, this is our opinion. Mm -hmm. So don't take anything too seriously. There should be disagreements. Yep, and um, our tier lists are to be taken as independent from each other. So, for example, the S tier of the Gruel Commanders is not necessarily as powerful as the S tier of the Golgari Commanders or something else. They're they're uh, within they're self-contained within them themselves. Yeah. So, I think that's about everything. What do you say we get started? Um, the, we go in alphabetical order. Yeah, as you let's can tell here. jump right in with Atarka World Render. Yep. Um, and we put the we put the tier of the commanders up here while we're talking about them. Atarka is not an S tier commander, but so Atarka is a. We're not. We're gonna try not to read them all, but to start, I'll read this one just just to set the tone. It's a seven mana six four with flying and trample, and it says whenever a dragon that you control attacks, it gets double strike. Um. So Eli, I've never seen an Atarka deck before have you no but if i was to go just gruel dragons i would think uh, tarka would be really good commander double strikes really good uh decent stats kind of expensive but you can play that out onto a board of a couple dragons and prevent or present lethal damage to an opponent pretty easily with that yeah like if you play like five drop dragon six drop dragon a tarka attack that's like 20 damage probably or something yeah so if you're going Dragon Tribal, you've probably got better options with more colors, but if you just wanted Gruel, which I think would be really good, I think it's probably better than Mono Red, because Dragons cost a lot. Yeah. So green is nice. Um, good color combination for it. I'm thinking maybe like a, like a C tier. That's what I was thinking as well. So I am yeah. I I don't think people often play Tarka um, for decent reasons. Like, it's not the worst commander out there, of course. Like, it does things, but... You know, there's there's just a lot of even recently they've been playing they've been printing more like big seven drop flying commanders that do big things and the new ones have haste. Mm -hmm. This one really does require you to have haste to get something out of it immediately, except for the fact that you're playing you know other dragons, but you're limited by yeah, only have or a board state. Yep, and you're limited by having only gruel dragons to choose from. And while there are a lot of good gruel dragons, red being the most frequent color of dragons, you know you're missing out on some notable exceptions in other colors. Yeah. So. It's all right though. Not mm -hmm. not offended at all, but Atarka. All right. Next we have Borborygmos, the original one from Guild Pact. I think is that that is. Yeah, this is our or Dissension or something. Start. I knew this would come up quickly, but there's going to be a lot of chumbos in the Gruel colors. Yeah. Yeah. If we've mentioned that phrase or that word before on other episodes, but we'll we'll elaborate it more on the future. But that's just what I'm going to call this guy. Um, yeah, Bor Borborygmos, original one, not very... Man, most of these original uh, Ravnica like, commanders... Yeah, from original Ravnica. Aside from, like, Tesa, they all kind of sucked. Like, maybe Ulash was alright, and I guess uh, Experiment I, Kraj. I think there were, there were like, two um, there were like two legendaries in each color combination yeah. correct, in, in the original Ravnica, and a lot of them weren't great Momir's to these right. standards. But this is, like... Out of 20... Ag this is like Agris yeah. cost levels of... Not doing anything? Yeah. 6-7 Trample, when it deals combat damage to a player, put a plus and plus and counter on each creature you control. I'm... Let's give him a D tier. Yeah, I'm... Because F yeah. is reserved for the uh, the Legends commanders today. Yeah, so if... if um, So only five of the uh, colors in Magic have legendary creatures from Legends. And um, what is it, The allied colors? Yep, allied yeah, colors. and Gruel being one of the allied color combinations, they have five or six or seven legendary creatures from Legends, and 
if this was an was not uh, an allied color, four burgundos probably would be an F tier. But there's mm-hmm. so many worse ones that it's got to be D. I would say. Yeah. However, Borby had a bit of a glow up mm-hmm. in Borberigmos Enraged from Gate Crash, and and he's actually a really cool commander. I think uh, seven six trample when he deals combat damage to a player, you look at the top three cards of your deck, put all land cards from among those into your hand, and then you can discard a land card to have him deal three damage to any target. Yeah. So I, I just want to say the thing that I think is most important about uh, Borberigmos Enraged is that. When you have such expensive commanders, they really need to be able to do something right away. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it's just so, like, risky. If your opponent's removing your Borborygmos, like, after you play it, or, like, it dies to a board wipe, at least you have the ability to interact with the board, or just kill players by discarding two, three lands, or whatever, to hit people or, or creatures. Yeah, he's got a cool ability to turn your lands into interaction or instant damage. He draws you lands land cards, which is really cool. Yeah, and he you know he's got trample, so he does he's a he allows himself to probably get a hit in somehow, even if it's only for a couple damage. Yeah, I actually uh, I play Borborigmos in my uh, aforementioned Chumbo Tribal deck because he is a very good tr- Chumbo, and uh, he actually has a, an interesting kind of combo. It's not exactly infinite with uh, the Gitrog monster and. The land with Delve on it. Dakmore Salvage. Yeah, Dakmore Salvage. So he's... I've never been disappointed with Borborygmos. He gets killed a lot because, you know, he's 8 mana, but you usually have a couple lands to pitch and blow some stuff up. And Yeah. He's really cool. I want to give him, like, a B tier. I want to give him a B tier, too. Definitely better than a Tarka um, yeah. World Render, I think. Um, now we got Daryl, Hunter of Walkers, from uh, the uh, Secret Lair, Walking Dead. Um... He's a, I'm going to read this one because maybe people don't know. Mm-hmm. It's a 4 mana 4-4, four, four, and he says, At the beginning of your upkeep, target opponent creates three walker tokens, which are zombie creatures. Um, and he says, Tap, deal two damage to target creature. And he says, When a zombie an opponent controls dies, you draw a card. So the play pattern is you play him on four or whatever, and then on your next turn you give someone a bunch of zombies, and then you tap it to kill one of them, or you play like a pyroclasm or something to deal two damage to all creatures, you draw a couple cards. Yeah, so he's a... Four mana, four four, taps to shoot creatures. That's that's all nice. Um, yep. Ideally, you're gonna draw three cards from mm-hmm. him, assuming no other zombies. I don't like. It's hard to to put it because he doesn't like do any unless you put like death touch on him. What he's just doing is he's just sitting there and drawing a card or a couple every turn and giving your opponents creatures. Mm-hmm. So like it's hard. He doesn't like have, seem like he has like an obvious game plan. Except for, like, the death touch equipment on him kind of thing, right? Or, uh... Or Pyrohemia. Yeah, Pyrohemia effects or whatever, right? That seems pretty strong. It does seem good, but it... But it's every upkeep you have to give somebody three, so... If you stumble on your ways to kill them, they could, you know, it's giving your opponents weapons to use against you. That's a lot every turn. At first I thought it was just one time, but then I read it again and... I don't I, know. I don't think he's like like drawing cards is good, but I I don't know. It it's seems... kind of weird, but it's not bad. It draws you probably a lot of cards. You think in B ish somewhere like here, or do you think like C? I'm thinking probably B. Yeah, I'm thinking below Borbergmos. You think? Yeah. I don't know about that. That could easily be one that's better than I think. I've never seen anyone play it or played it myself, but I wouldn't be surprised. Mm-hmm. But drawing cards is on the commander is is powerful. I won't yeah. deny that. Here's one we love. I love I love Dragon Lord Tarka. I've uh, not played it as a commander before, but I played it in the ninety nine, and I think it's quite good. Um, it's a seven mana eight eight with flying and trample. Probably the biggest stats um, of any you know for stats for you know cost ratio of any commander on this list, and of most commanders in general, I'd say. Um, and it really does emphasize what Gruul is doing, and that's just being big. But he also has a really good ability when he enters, which is just like when he enters the battlefield. Deals five to creatures and planeswalkers, like divided as you choose. So, it's really just like deal with a thing we need it and have a giant, a giant dude. This is the uh, the premium flame tongue kabu. Flame tongue kabu, you know, for, you know the plus, first plus, yeah, XL. You made fun of him in high school. Look at him now, kind of thing. Um, I don't know where I don't know like where to put it, but. I don't... I just love the card so much. I'm not sure how I'd rate it as a commander, though. Yeah, I don't... It probably doesn't add too much as a commander, but... Yeah. 
It's so cool. I... It, it doesn't want you to play dragons. Like, it doesn't reward you for playing dragons. So it just seems like a a, a big guy commander, a ramp. Gruel, gruel good stuff. Gruel good stuff uh, and ramp. I don't know. You're going to need removal. Why put it in command zone. You know? So, I don't know. How do you feel about, like, high B tier or something like that? Or do you think it's better? I think I like Borby a little bit more than like, her as a commander. Sure. But we'll put her down here. I like her more than Daryl. That's just personal preference. So. I, I like it more than Daryl, yeah. Sure, we can do that for now. This is one uh, a friend of ours actually has. is Galia of the Endless Dance. It's uh, 2 mana, 2-2 two, two haste. Uh, other satyrs get plus 1, plus 1 and have haste. But that's not what our buddy cares about. He built it around the whenever you attack with 3 or more creatures, you may discard a card at random if you do draw 2 cards. So he just plays a bunch of... Um, low cmc creatures with haste and stuff to try and trigger that and get some early fast card advantage and just play low to the ground aggro stuff yeah seems neat uh yeah Seder tribal you don't have that's probably i don't that's one, one of the, the least support tribes. yeah there is satyrs are not very good wouldn't recommend it um so i'm gonna discount that idea i mean obviously this is your one of your better Seder tribal commanders but that's not well, very it's powerful like we talked about on our last episode the tribal trap yeah you don't have to play that Seder Tribal. You probably shouldn't. I don't think... I, bad. I'd have to look it up, but I wouldn't... I can't think of any satyrs I'd play. Camille and Colossus. <laughs> there you go. That's the one I'd play. Um, yeah, but I mean, a two-drop commander gets big ups for me. Um, and it's haste, so it's got kind of value with, like, equipment that do, like, for example, swords of and what stuff like that. What do we like say that. about haste, Spencer? Haste is based. Yeah. So if you have, like, you know, if you're playing, like, an equipment package, you can, like, play your commander for two and equip, like, a feast and famine to it. Right away to get that value, or like a sort of the animus kind of thing. That's kind of nice. Um, the cheaper the mana, the creature with haste is, the more beneficial it is for that. Yeah, and about the uh, the triggered ability. So that is card advantage. Yeah. But I still don't know if I like that. I mean, maybe if you uh, have one or two cards like lands in your hand, mm -hmm. and you know you don't care about them anyways, but discard at random doesn't seem great super early and that's probably when you're going to start triggering this so i've seen people play mm. similar commanders as these where they discard random cards and they they put like madness cards in their decks just to like if they get lucky with that sort of thing yeah i'm not sure if that's how I'd, i don't think that's how i would play the deck but i mean it does make sense if you play like a very low to the ground strategy like you can just empty out your hand and you then you have a lot of recursion and gruel yeah so you can maybe play around with that maybe play i'm not sure exactly but like it does draw you two cards for losing one, and it does require you to play a certain kind of strategy, though. I'm not super big on it, but I don't think it's the worst in the world. I'm thinking pretty C tier. I'm thinking above Atarka. What do you think? Yeah. And it's got some nice Johan Voss uh, art, which I like. Um, now we got Grand Warlord Radha, which is one of three Radhas they've made, and they all do kind of similar things, but kind of not. This might be the best one. I gotta say, I think it probably is, yeah. Yeah, format 3, 4, haste, whenever you attack, or whenever one or more creatures you control attack, add that much mana in any combination of red and or green to your mana pool, and you don't lose that mana as phases and steps end. Yep, all the Radas have this ability where they get you mana for combat somehow, or something with attacking, I think. Or no, not the newest one. Yeah, not the newest one. A couple one, of them do, though. Uh, this one... And the first one? Very the the first one it, it doesn't even uh save it it's just like during combat. it's just during combat yeah when it attacks you get two red but, but they but they all have something to do with making mana or additional lands or something or this is very strong though. that's a lot of mana uh four mana three four haste that pretty much refunds you one mana right away when you attack with it right so, yeah and any other creature you played beforehand gives you an additional mana with that too so if you have three creatures before you play her the turn you play rada she's mana neutral yeah because you pay four for her and then you get four back i rank that very highly uh it goes infinite with like aggravated assault and five creatures mm -hmm. uh i might want to give her an s tier for Ooh. now at least but just I, I haven't done to other gruel commanders. I haven't done too much looking at what there is, but we can tentatively maybe there's just not I'll tentatively put her in there, but I wouldn't be surprised if she goes down to A. But we'll see. She, right? It's a she? Yeah. Yeah. Um we can put it there for now though. I'm not I'm not mad at that. Sure. I mean it seems powerful, for sure. Um 
even just the baseline of what like a normal rotted deck would do as well as like the best built rotted deck they both seem very strong right yeah i think it, even it's like floor it's lowest case scenario is pretty good yeah and like she is kind of a must kill commander as well because you know or a must board wipe or something right because like she stays around for a turn the next turn you have access to like 10 plus mana or whatever yeah. right and that's one of the i would say the most powerful thing in commander one of the most powerful things at least is having access to more mana than you should yeah mana and especially and cards and uh that's a lot of mana especially from the command zone when you have commanders that start giving you multiples of mana from the command zone i'm i'm very scared of those those mm -hmm. cards what do you think of Grumgully the Generous? He gives your... Uh, non-humans. Your, uh, your non-human creatures enter with an additional plus and plus encounter on it. And he's a three mana, three, three. So I've seen people play this as a goblin, a, like a gruel goblin commander, which I think is kind of interesting. Well, I've seen it uh, as like gruel persist cards. That's like true, with yeah. With Primus. Yeah, and you, yeah, with a sack outlet or something. Yeah, and that's kind of dirty. Uh, yeah, um, I've played... Rumgully, personally, um, in the 99 of my Jira deck, just as kind of like a fun, kind of an anthem, but also a dude. I don't know. Just have my rhinos enter with a counter. Mm -hmm. um, and it's okay. Um, but I think outside of the Persist stuff, I'm not a big fan of it. But with the Persist stuff, of course, like that's going to be strong. Yeah, it is an uncommon, so that kind of yeah. probably caps it out a little bit. Like you could uh, probably go infinite with like Goblin Bombardment and like Young Wolf. Not Young Wolf, that one has Undying. There's a couple Persist ones that do stuff like that. Yeah. So, I mean, it has the it has the combo potential, but I'm other but out I mean, I'm not I'm not that big on that personally. I'm thinking maybe uh another C tier. I'm thinking above Yeah. Galia up Best here. One yet. Yeah. I mean, I, obviously it's got the potential to be powerful and stuff, right? Like, you can do good things on a Grum Gully deck. You have to be scared of him comboing you off, right? Mm -hmm. But other than that, I'm just not impressed. So, Halar the Fire Fletcher, though. Uh, whenever you cast a spell, if that spell is kicked, you put a plus one plus one counter on Halar the Fire Fletcher. Then Halar deals damage equal to the number of plus one plus one counters on it to each opponent. So that's that's a good ability, but you have to play a bunch of kicker cards and in the deck. A lot of kicker cards are underwhelming to say the least there's uh more and more good ones when they keep uh reusing that mechanic yeah but... um that being said like you know you do have means to act with this commander without playing too many kicker cards like for example you can do some sort of plus one plus one counter synergy and then you play one kicker card mm -hmm. and get the because it is just based on the number of counters on it not the right. not necessarily the kicker cards you played or if you do things like copy the ability, it'll end up, you know, putting two counters on it, then dealing the damage twice. Mm -hmm. But that being said, you know, I I think you do have to work pretty hard to get a lot of damage on this, or just play a lot of bad cards to get a lot of damage. And if they kill your Halar, your deck doesn't do anything. Yeah, I don't so know. So do you think this is another another C tier? I I feel I feel like it's a C tier. I want to say here. How is that? Yeah, or maybe yeah. here? What do you think? I think probably below Grumgully. Yeah. Uh. No hate to Halar, it's just, uh, I just don't think many kicker, kicker cards are very good, is the problem. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, it does do that thing, which, uh, I do like, which it, 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 it does the damage to everybody. So, like, you are working towards a kill on everybody, not just one player. So that's mm -hmm. something that's a positive for it. But it also makes it a negative, because, uh, it means your opponents are more worried about it because it's certain that it's hitting them, right? Yeah. Not just maybe. So... There's a little bit of push and pull there. Here we have the classic magic lore figure of Hans Ericsson. He looks a lot like um, that one uh, butt crack guy um, from the GP. Do you remember that, Eli? <laughs> the MTG, hashtag MTG crack or whatever? Maybe. He looks like him. <laughs> well, because he's fat? Yeah, and he has a beard. That's it. All right. Read the card, Eli. Well, he's, he's looking jolly. Yeah, he... He has this kind of a uh, kind of complicated ability. Uh, when he attacks, you reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a creature card, you put on the battlefield tapped and attacking the defending player or a planeswalker they control. Otherwise, that card goes into your hand, so you draw a card no matter what. Uh, but when you put a creature card on the battlefield this way, it fights Hans. So if it's anything bigger than three power, it's going to kill Hans. I mean, and do you think the way that this deck is built is you play a bunch of big things or you don't play, or you play a bunch of small things? 
I gotta say, I mean, I feel like it's probably the play big things, right? And you just let him die and protect him maybe with somehow. Yeah, I think that's the the common yeah way to make that is just make him indestructible, dark steel plate or something. And but it's like just the top card of your deck. Yeah. And how many big things can you really play? Like fifteen, well, maybe. At least it draws you a card no matter what. That's nice. Okay, true, true. That being said, not very reliable, not very easy to because if you are doing the big thing, then you also have to. Have a way to keep him alive, that or you just let him die, and I, then... And Eli, you and I both think that the s- scroll rack effects are... tend to be more trouble than they're worth. Yeah. Maybe with this one it makes kind of sense, but in a general rule... Mm, sorry, Hans. Uh, I'm, I'm giving him a D tier. Yeah. Maybe above Borbrigmos. You think that's okay? Yeah, he's not as good as his... Uh, he draws a card. Not as good as his sister. Yeah. Should have been you, Hans. Feels bad, man. Does he do something? Does he do something similar to what Akans Run does? I think kind of actually, because that puts creatures into play yeah, somehow. Yeah, puts stuff into play, but yeah, kind of lore, whatever. Here's the first of our Legends Commanders, Gerard of the Closed Fist. He is a six mana six five, and he's a knight. Once the Order of the Closed Fist. Reached throughout the Kubbrian Highlands. <laughs> now Gerard alone remains to uphold their standard. Well, that's good. I mean, he's upholding their standard, so yeah, yeah he's in the up tier already. <laughs> but does he mean like their standards literally or like figuratively? Because like a standard is like a like a flag, right? Like their uh, their colors, yeah. Yeah, or something. So maybe maybe that yeah, whatever. Okay, moving on. This is one of the new commanders from the D&D set. No, not D&D. What is, is this from D&D? Yeah, from the yeah. Adventures in the Forgotten Realms commander pre-cons. I don't know this D&D character, commanders. but it's Clouth, Unrivaled Ancient. Um, it's a So this is what I was referring to when I was talking about like the kind of dragon, um, seven mana dragon commanders uh, earlier when we were talking about uh, Atarka. It doesn't pay you off specifically for commanders, but it is a big dragon with haste and a good attack ability, so it kind of seems similar to Atarka. He says, uh, he's a 7 mana 4 4. He says, flying haste, and when it attacks, you make X mana in any combination of colors with X the total power of attacking creatures you control. Um, well, I guess attacking creatures. Um, spend this mana only to cast spells um, until the end of the turn. You don't lose this mana as steps and phases end. So, similar to Rada, I suppose, except it gives you way more mana, right? Big Rada, way more mana, except you can't spend that into something like... Aggravated, aggravated assault. assault. Yep. Which I think is pretty much probably the reason they put that on there. Honestly, yeah. Because otherwise it's just like a one... I mean, one and a half card combo with that because like you just need one more power to get the five mana. Yeah, that being said, still very strong. You've actually seen this played, haven't you? Yeah, I've played against a guy at our, our LGS that played a uh, Clouth deck and... Um, you know, he, I played against him once or twice, and, you know, he was missing land drops, you know, doing not a lot, and then Clath comes out and makes 20 mana, and then, you know, it's it's, it's pretty good, so. Not not uh, not upset at this card at all. Very, I, I'm pretty impressed, actually, honestly. Yeah, seems good, but the uh, the price point between 4 and 7 mana, I think. Big deal. Not as good, Is nearly. considerable. Uh, that being said, I, I still think it seems like an A tier. Yeah, I'm going to go A tier. Because that ability is very strong, even if you just... I like playing spells. I don't need to do the combo thing. That's just a lot of mana, and that facilitates... It re, It does that mana refund ability, too, where you could get that seven mana back the turn you play that. Almost certainly you're getting more than seven mana. Yeah. Like, even just, like, something very boring, like a Thrag Tusk, you play it and attack with it and a Thrag Tusk, that's nine mana back. Mm-hmm. And then you play some blockers or ramp spells or whatever you want to play afterwards, card draw, whatever you need. Yeah. Very so, happy with uh, Cloth, I think. And now we have... Clothis, god of destiny. She's a 4-5 indestructible enchantment creature god. Has that same dual color god text of devotion of 7 or greater, and it becomes a creature. Mm -hmm. Uh, At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, exile target card from a graveyard. If it was a land card, you add red or green mana to your mana pool. Otherwise, you gain 2 life, and Clothis deals 2 damage to each opponent. This doesn't seem that splashy, but... I'm, I like Clothis a lot. Actually. I you know I've never seen one play Clothis as a commander, but you know th- it's it tickles that part of me that just is like you know I this sounds kind of good to me honestly. 
And I'm a big fan of trying to do things in color combinations that don't seem like the things you should be doing. And this seems like you could make some kind of gruel control deck. Yeah. And that seems really fun. Incidental graveyard hate is nice, but it also provides you some kind of value. Yeah, you either you either just if you need the mana, it's like a mana dork every turn that doesn't die to board wipes and stuff because it is destructible. Sometimes it's just like a blocker, like an infinite blocker. If you have like maybe enchantments you're talking about or other creatures, you know, that have the color pips, maybe planeswalkers. This is pairs with pretty well yeah. planeswalkers because it blocks forever, right? Yeah, I like that a lot. And then sometimes you just need to you know start chipping away at people, right? I might want to put her at the top of B tier. I would. Wow. I, I like her above these. Yeah, I think I think she's cool. I was thinking that sim, something similar as well. Oh, here's another one that uh probably top of B tier commander. Yeah, we have a uh, a friend that I think was building this or already did build this because it's it's actually pretty cool. It's got really cool Richard Kane Ferguson art. It's Livonia Salone, the six mana four four. Legends Commander with First Strike and Legendary Landwalk. So Legendary Landwalk, that that's like on the verge of like this card maybe does something. Sometimes. Almost, yeah. Sometimes like it's maybe unblockable, but I feel like there still might be games where nobody has a legendary land. They're not as common as you might think. Because that's not like non basic land. That's no. actually like even Well one of the Is Urborg a legendary land? No. Yeah, some of them just aren't legendary. For like, Amiria is not a legendary land. Yeah, Dark so not a legendary you're land. really looking for the um, the monocolored like, uh, but a lot of the legendary lands are like fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. So, and also, I guess you're looking at like Nykthos, Nykthos. which is the probably the most common one, right? Cabal Coffers isn't even legendary. No, no, most of the good lands that people play aren't legendary. Um, I don't think uh, is. I don't think uh, Guy's Cradle is legendary. That one might be, though. I'm not sure. No, that so, one is? I don't remember. Based on the art and this one actually kind of having abilities, it's tempting to have this be the, the Legends Commander that crawled out of F tier, but I'm more confident just saying that this is the top of the F tier. Well, another problem... Guaranteed. I'm with that. Another problem with this card is it costs $130. So, that's another... That doesn't... Contribute to its ranking, but that's just something to mention. Well, it's probably so expensive because Livonia's own nature is a matter of mystery, Spencer. Nothing is known for sure, merely rumors of unearthly stealth and unholy alliances. I'm so gonna Labor say... Text is always so cool on these two, so that's... that's I'm gonna cool. say it's that expensive because of Richard Kane Ferguson. His, probably. His art is based. Oh, no, here's another one right away. Yep. Marhalt... Els Dragon. It's a six mana four six with Rampage One, which if you don't know, Rampage is when it becomes blocked, it gets if, if it has Rampage One, it gets plus one plus one for each creature blocking it. So it pretty much does nothing. Marhalt Els Dragon follows a strict philosophy, never letting emotions cloud his thoughts. No chance observer could imagine the rage in his heart. He doesn't look that raging. He looks pretty calm. I'm going to give it... Well, Mark Poole as well. So, Mark Poole's base as well. I'm going to give it better than the 6-5 vanilla. Yeah. Okay, cool. Fair. Now we have Mina and Den, Wildborn. Um, this is... Was this from a commander deck? This was originally from uh, Battle oh, for Zendikar. Or no, oh, Oath of the Gatewatch. Gatewatch. Sorry. I think it was in a commander deck as well. But, uh, yeah. Um, it's a 4 mana 4-4... Four, four, you can play additional land each turn, so those abilities are always pretty good. And then, he, and then they, I suppose, have the ability, um, two mana, return a land you control to its owner's hand, um, and target creature gets trampled on a turn. So, this is a commander that has gotten better since the release of Zendikar Rising and, MDFCs. and MDFCs. It's got that interesting mechanic of being able to rebuy your MDFC lands you play as a spell later in the game. But, I don't know, I mean, it's 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 pretty much just like a, um, I mean, that, I feel like that's much less of an important part of the text. The important part of the text is just the, you can play initial land every turn, right? Mm -hmm. And that's not, that, that shouldn't be overestimated, because you do have to keep having lands to play. If you miss your land drops later, it's not, it's kind of like you didn't get to play the, you know, multiple lands. Yeah. But, that being said... You know, that that is a good ability, especially out of the command zone. It makes you want to play ways to put lands in your hand. 
Mm-hmm. Um, giving trample is not irrelevant. Sometimes it matters. It's all pretty, pretty tame, pretty but tame. useful abilities. How do you feel about a MDFC tier? I'm going to put it at the top of MDFC <laughs> tier. Is that okay? That sounds good. Okay. They're pretty good. Yeah. I like it, yeah. So this is another new-ish commander that I haven't seen anyone play. Yeah, Jumpstart Commander. Nyath of the Dire Hunt. It's a cool one, though. It's a 4-mana 3-3. Three, three. Whenever one or more creatures you control fight or become blocked, draw a card. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, you may pay 2 and a hybrid gruel. If you do, double target creatures power until end of turn. That creature must be blocked this combat if able. So it's like, card draw, a little built-in removal. Seems pretty good. I don't hate it, no. I'm good Fight Commander. Um, it lets you play, you know, kind of bad fight cards because they they, they can turn into cantrips. I don't hate that either. Um, the only thing that kind of sucks is some of the better fight cards are cards that don't actually fight. They just say your creature deals damage to their creature, mm-hmm. and she doesn't work with them. She, he, she. Um, I think. Because, you know, they have to fight to get you the card to be drawn. Um, maybe, I guess... So it says whenever one of her creatures becomes blocked... So that means if they blo- if they like double block, it's still one card, or is it two? I believe it's, it's just one, one, right? Card. So, so I guess playing lures and stuff, lure effects are things that make it so your opponent has to block with all their creatures, or must be blocked with able or something like that. Well, she kind of has that built-in lure with the the second ability. Yeah, but that um, I mean, like the ones that make it so they have to block with all their creatures, that yeah. that wouldn't give you more cards or anything, right? I don't think so. Okay. Um, Nyeth is kind of cool though. I mean, if you have a creature with trample or something. And it's pretty big, like like for example, doubling maybe, power and toughness is really good. Let's say you have this this Dragon Lord Tarka um, oh, from earlier in this deck. I mean, my bad, just doubles the power, but still, yeah. that's. Uh, but imagine, I don't know, you you make it sixteen power, and they have to block with their Reacher Flying creature, I suppose, and you get through a lot of that damage. You draw a card. I'd like to see this, but until then, I feel like it's maybe maybe it's B tier. I'm with you. I just thought you were saying C because you said I'd like to see this. <laughs> um. I think I like it better than Daryl. I think so too. I think so too. Pretty we'll put cool. it. We'll put her. Put her there. Let us know if you have a Nyeth, the Dire Hunt deck. All right, now we've got Nikia, of the old ways. This is such a gruel commander. This one feels gruel. This yeah. This is like the most gruel, and it's. In, I'm sorry. I think it's kind of boring. Yeah. She's a five mana five five, so that's cool. But uh, you can't cast non creature spells, and whenever you tap a land for mana. Add one mana of any type that land produced. So it's a double your mana commander, mm-hmm. which is seem kind of a little problematic, I think. I Like I said it before, Eli, I think ways that generate large amounts of mana are some of the most problematic things. Like I think Belby is one of the best, um, best uh, commanders in its colors, um, green and black. Um, this comes out at 5 and does have a real restriction of you can't cast non-creature spells. You pretty much play a mostly a deck with mostly creatures in it. Maybe all. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, there's so many good creatures that do spell abilities that I don't even know if it's even that big of a, a deal. When you're getting such a big payoff like double mana. Yeah, I had a... Uh, way back in the day, I had a different Magic Twitter account and I used to try and evaluate new cards and like do tweets on like you know everyone's always trying to come up with their secret tech and i i don't think this is actually that good but i thought it was kind of a funny thing was uh if you know the card bizarre trader it's a two mana two one goblin that lets you pretty much donate an artifact creature or land to a player Mm -hmm. so i was like well if you're playing nikia deck maybe play bizarre trader because you can uh ramp out all your creatures and then uh (laughs) then give her to the person most likely to have a board wipe and they can't cast it anymore until they make her die. Yeah. It's interesting. So. Um, but I do think Nikki is quite good, honestly. Like, just, I don't think it's that hard to, in only creatures, especially if you have double mana, to, to assemble things where you draw many, many cards, give them all haste, do perforos kind of things, kill everybody. Yeah, and, and just because she says you can't cast non-creature spells doesn't mean you don't play any in your deck. Like, you might want to play some just to ramp her out super early like i don't know gilded lotus yeah also i mean no i'm um, sorry. Gi- sorry i know yeah. what you're saying gilded it's the zero mana freaking what card are you talking about from commander legends the 
Black Lotus. Oh, uh, uh, Jeweled Lotus. Jeweled Lotus. I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah. No, yeah, you can play that early and then get her out. Um, additionally, um, I don't know if there's... I mean, you you can... Like, for example, let's say you're playing like a mostly creatures deck or something. You can play like the... Um, oh, what is the card called? Um, Prime... The the card that you flip cards on top of your deck until you get a non-permanent spell. Yeah, Primal Surge. Primal Surge is a... You could play this as a Primal Surge deck. And then just play Primal Surge on turn, you know, turn five or six or whatever. Because you play this commander, then you untap. Play a sack outlet, like creature. And then you can tap for ten mana. The mana. Tap for ten mana. Sacrifice or play Primal Surge, win the game. Like, you know, yeah. just that's something you can do with the deck. I think she's quite good. I want to give her an eight tier. What do you think about that? I think so. That's what I was thinking. Do you think below or above um, Mr. Dragon Boy? Maybe above. I think she's quite good, and pretty. I and I don't think it's. Uh, I'm not a personal fan of it though. Mm-hmm. I don't like. I'm. I think we've all, as commander players, we've all seen mana doubling abilities enough, and I think we're tired of them. That's speaking for myself mostly, yeah. but I'm not keen to see more mana doubling effects in games. Yeah, and uh, up next, I think this might be one of the most popular gruel commanders on EDH rec, mm-hmm. or just. <laughs> One of the most popular commanders on there in general, I, I think. I think Amnath is pretty popular, yeah. Yeah, the Locus of Rage. See, 7 mana, 5-5 five, five with Landfall. Make a 5-5 five, five red and green elemental creature token. And then whenever he or another elemental you control dies, deals 3 damage to any target. So it's a built-in engine for making a very big board, and then also kind of a form of board wipe protection, because if that board gets big enough, and somebody board wipes you, you might just be able to kill them or yep. dome them for a ton. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, this card's uh, really powerful with cards like Greater Good, because you're able to just like play a ramp spell, draw a bunch, you know, and then sacrifice the the, the token it creates, deal three to something, and then like draw a bunch of cards, maybe into another ramp spell to keep mm-hmm. going and maybe kill people, um, or other ways to do things like um, like turning. There's some weird things to do, like turning all your lands into creatures and then making them all elementals somehow. Um, and then you kill everyone. Um, there's just a lot of stuff you can do with Omnath, and... I mean, the thing with the thing with Landfall in Commander is that... And I'm going to talk about this when we get to the Phyleth, who's another Landfall Commander. But one problem with ramp strategies is you play a bunch of ramp spells, then you run out of things to do sometimes... You don't find your card draw, and you just, like, play lands into lands, and that's all you have. At least with this card, when you ramp, you know, really early with, like, a burgeoning or something, and you get to seven mana, you play your commander, all of your ramp spells turn into real spells. They turn into, like, Advent of the Worms, Mm -hmm. which is a spell that just makes a 5-5. So, you know, thing Landfall, I think, is pretty good. I don't know how high I think this card is, but, you know, why don't you talk about it a little bit, Like, Tell me what you think. Well, I was just thinking, um... I like the card Rampaging Baloths, which is a 6-mana creature that's a 6-6 six, six, and Landfall makes a 4-4 four, four beast. Yep. And I was starting to think to myself, I have that in a Jun deck, but maybe Omnath is just better. better. I mean, it is one more mana, but that uh It makes bigger dudes trigger, and the, 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 the bolts, right? Yeah, maybe this would just be better than that. Yeah, and they can you can even bolt you know creatures as well if you need to like for that greater good kind of thing sacrifice a creature and then kill a thing you need mm-hmm. right that's a so I I don't know I think I'm that's pretty good right yeah I think uh, a tier do you think uh, maybe here here what are you thinking I think maybe below the dragon sure but I'm not definitely good and then Phyleth right after the other landfall commander you know I think we skipped <laughs> this one on our pilot episode where we reviewed Zendikar Rising. Mm-hmm. But since then, since then we've seen it played, and uh, it's actually pretty good. Yeah, I was originally um, I was not big on Phylath, and I'm still not like in, like I'm still not like thinking it's crazy. But my opinion of it definitely went up. Um, similar to that thing I was talking about a moment ago with the ramp into nothing. At least with Phylath, you ramp into it, and then you play your lands, and then you know you just have like big guys to kill people. You have a way to kill people. Mm-hmm. So. I don't know, like, uh, putting four, the, I mean, it's really easy just to make, like, a nine, a nine, eight, or, or an eight, nine, or whatever, and then, like, kill someone over the course of a couple turns. I implore you, though, do not go the Jimmy Wong route with this and fall into the tribal trap 
and just play a bunch of stupid ass plants in your deck. No. You don't need to do that. It makes plants. It makes your plant. You can play Avenger of Zendikar. That makes plants too. You can play that freaking MDFC Mana Dork, whatever. Just don't play a bunch of dumb, stupid plants for no reason. Plant. They're not good cards. They're mostly bad cards. So uh, I don't know where to go with where to, where to, where to go with discussing Phyleth. Do you have anything else you want to say about them? It's pretty 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 basic. I'd say maybe like a B tier though. It's uh, how about B or C tier? How about maybe it's better than a Tarka? Sure, we'll go here. Yeah, I like that. Okay, now we've got some of the other Radas. Heart Rada Heart of Kelt. Um. And Rada Heart of Keld says, as long as your tur- your turn, it has first strike. It's th- a three mana three three, and it says you can look at the top card of your library and p- play lands from the top of your library, and it's got a mana sync ability for six mana, and it says Rada gets plus X plus X until on turn where X is the number of lands you control. You know, Spencer, I really, I know it is kind of a form of card advantage. I'm not a big fan of that kind of the Corsair Proof is kind play of uh... lands from the top of your library. Uh... It, it's I mean, something. Work out. You're you're good with the math on these things, Spencer. How often is that actually drawing you a card? If you have the right amount of lands in your deck, that's like a third of the time, right? Sure, a third to somewhere between thirty and forty percent. But if you're like me, it's more like five percent of the time. Sure. <laughs> so I'm I'm not a big fan. Six mana to that is a strong pump, but that's a lot of mana. Yeah. As long as it's your turn, it has first strike. That's first strike. Isn't really a, it's as not good a, on the uh, It's the not attack. evasion, right? It's it's just like... It's a really defensive ability, so... I don't, I don't know. know what the point of the first strike is. I guess it's against Death Touch at something, but like if you're pumping her to be not, you know 9 power, 12 power, the first strike isn't mattering. I guess it's stopping like triple blocks? Yeah. Right? I'm not impressed with this Rada. She's alright. Bottom of C tier. Damn. Below all these? I think she's... I think she's better than... Better than Halar, maybe. Better than Halia or Halar, yeah. Yeah, she's just boring. She is boring, but she's she's not worse than... She's okay. So, the other Rada, the OG Rada. This, mom, this might seem boring, too, and it might seem bad, but I'm going to have to stick up for her a little bit. The Rada Heir to Kel. This is one of the decks that you played, Eli, right? This was my original Gruul deck. Full I disclosure. wanted to make a... The only Gruul deck I've played, and I still play, is a Gruul Spell Slinger deck. Which is a very atypical Gruul build. Mm-hmm. But I thought that I wanted to play with a lot of um, regrowth effects. And, you know, you got a lot of great regrowths in green and a lot of recursion for instance and sorceries in red. And you get rummaging and you get land ramp for your mana and rituals and stuff. So I built her because I simply wanted to have a two mana ramp spell every game. Yeah. And that's what she did. So I could go turn two, play her, and turn three, play any number of the... Uh, Four mana ramp spells. Yeah, Explosive Vegetation, Sky Shroud Claim, and just play a bunch of those. I've since since uh, switched the deck from her to Krark and Galarna, which I'm not sure if, if that's the right call because Krark is a little piece of shit and yeah. bounces all my spells. But, you know, Rada is uh, it's pretty good. when she She's a two mana 2-2. Two, two. When she attacks, you get red red. And she can just tap for a green. So mostly I just use her for that tap for a green. But I also had this cycle in there because in Gruul, like, you do have card advantage. And you get stuff like Harmonize and you can, like, regrow that and copy it. But a lot of your card draw, like, the best card draw in green is related to creatures. So yeah. if you're playing a creatureless strategy, you kind of have to find a couple other ways. And they do exist. But one I had seen at my game shop in Alexandria was playing cycling lands with life from the loam so i put that package into that deck and she's when you attack with her you get that red red that has to be spent in combat and rather than play a bunch of combat tricks or yeah. like just like just cycle some lands that's some good value um and another th- another thing that i like about life from the loam eli is that um <laughs> when, when life from the loam is one of the best cards in your deck it lets you play the card gamble Mm -hmm. Um, which is a one-mana red spell, which says search your library for the best card in your library and put it in your graveyard. No, what it actually says is is search your your library for a card, put it in your hand, then discard a card at random. For me, it's usually discard the card I search for. Well, then it's in Tomb. Yeah, so if you're searching for a Life from the Loam and you end up discarding your Life from the Loam, that's just fine because Life from the Loam has dredge, and you get it back, and you get your lands back, you cycle your lands, get your Life from the Loam back. It's great. Yeah. 
So I thought it was a, a fun deck. That being said, I just picked her because she was a two-mana mana dork. But that is kind of a cool thing to have in your command zone. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think, Spencer. Is there another... Two-mana dork? Two-mana commander that... In these colors, no. For mana that you can do that with? Um, well, there's some that, like, tap for mana for, like, instants and sorceries or, like, artifacts or something, I think, in, like, is it colors? But, like, for example, there's the uh, the Kaya wizard commander, which makes a wizard co- or makes the next spell cost one less for wizards you control. Not Kaya, Kaza. Um, but I don't think there's any other mana dorks on two mana that I can think of. Maybe maybe a mono green card. I'm sure there's a mono green legendary elf or something that does that. Well, I'm sure everyone knows how good it feels to play a mana rock on two and then your four drop on three. Like your commander. And, and I love that. Mm-hmm. So I think she deserves at least like a C tier. Yeah, this is flip, flipping the script of, uh, you know, you play ramp cell on two, com- four mana commander on three win the game. Now it's commander on two, four mana spell on three win the game. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I, I think she's better than... I think I think she's like I like here. her better than old Rada. Yeah, I think that's a good spot. Yeah. I think that's fair. Now we got Roshin Meander, or if I'm gonna indulge in some cringe. I don't 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 judge me, okay? Every time I see this guy's name, I think of Ed Sheeran. I don't know why. I'm sorry. I don't it's just the name. It she looks exactly like him. Yeah. <laughs> you think so? So I call I call her Ed Sheeran or something. I don't know why. I'm cringe. Um, four mana, four, four, and it says tap, add, colorless, 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 colorless. You can only use this, uh, to, to cast, uh, or sorry, to pay cast costs that contain X. So only X spells or abilities for this. So what, you got hydras, you got fireballs, uh... And everything in between? That's... Genesis wave. There's some other good X spells they've come out with recently, like there's, I don't know, volcanic... Uh, not offering offering is that the one no that's the there's there's some volcanic impulsive draw spell there's like that new um x spell that deals three or five times x damage or whatever Mm -hmm. um there's some good x spells that kill people but i'm not convinced that you want to play an x spell strategy it's a very niche thing yeah i'm not a big height if you're playing hydras you know there's that that uh three color hydra commander you probably play over this or the mono green one um, I'm not a big fan of Roshin Meander, but, I mean, it does do the thing where it makes a bunch of mana. I'm saying C, though. Or Bottom D. C. Down here? Yeah. Above Atarka, maybe? What I like think? Atarka better. Sure. I'm not so upset about that. Okay. Eli, I'm going to let oh. you talk about Rurik Thar, because Let's he's my go. boy. So Rurik Thar. He's a chumbo. <laughs> he he's is a, a chumbo. He's got two heads, too. I think I had to take him out of my Chumbo deck though because I played too many non-creature spells and he was a he was a bad Chumbo. He was hurting me too much. Yeah, but he is very good. He's a six mana six six, so that's awesome. Vigilance, Vigilance reach. He does have to attack each combat if able, but he has vigilance, so that's and he's a six six. So you can use there's usually somebody, but the important part whenever a player casts a non-creature spell, Rurikthar deals six damage to that player. So you can tell the level of degeneracy somebody plays by how much they hate seeing Rurikthar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Because it's either, you know, you might say, oh, it's fine, you know, you should be able to play non-creature spells, but how many, though? How many? How many? <laughs> how many do you need to play each turn? Because if that answer is, like, consistently, like, more than four, and that's why you hate him, that's, uh, I don't know. Rurikthar is a big boy... And six damage per in, or per non-creature spell is a lot of goddamn damage. Like like a lot, a lot. Yeah. And the the worst part about Rurik Thar is that he hits yourself. So I'm, I've played Rurik Thar in one of my decks that plays many non-creature spells, just because it's a good way to punish people a little bit. But you know, I've I've ended up dealing twenty to my eighteen to myself easily with that. But if he's your commander, so here's what here's you do. the difference. You either play. You build your deck around that, and you play very few non-creature spells. You pretty much keep it to probably ramp and really impactful spells. Like a couple of removal or, or something. Or you play as many life. as you want, and you just find some way to give him lifelink. Yeah, because if he has lifelink, every time he deals the six damage, you gain that life. But even without all that, 
still super solid. I want to say S tier. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be go- I'm cool with that. Yeah. He's just he's the hero all of Commander needs. Frankly, I love him. He's the saver of tables. He saves you from the degenerate player unless the degenerate player is playing creature based combo and then you're like okay fine. Or they uh, he's hurting everyone else for stopping that player. Then or they rightfully uh, kill or counter Rurikthar and then uh and then you're sad. And then they don't hit their land drop and don't ever play the Rurikthar again. You have to be like come on. How do you feel about these two? Uh, Put them above Rada. Okay, we'll put them at the top of S tier for now. Based. Now we got Stang with two Gs, because he is a G, and he comes with two Gs. Um, This is a Legends commander that got a reprint, so he did not the Legends border there. And here we go. It's another Legends commander that, like, does stuff. Yeah. Notefully, uh... Or notably, this one does not have flavor text. On he this looks account. exactly like Thanos, by the way. If you look at his face, his beard looks like Thanos's like wrinkles. Maybe. Okay, I'm sorry. He is a six mana three four. When he enters the battlefield, you make a legendary three four red and green human warrior creature token named Stang Twin. So he makes a twin of himself. Same stats and everything. And it says exile that token when Stang leaves the battlefield. Sacrifice Stang when that token leaves the battlefield. So if either of them die or leave, the other one leaves too. So for six mana, yeah. you get a whole six eight worth of power and toughness. Oh my god, that's almost like crazy. <laughs> Stang, you're not that guy. You're not the guy getting out of F tier. Get in the F tier here. Put him below that Linvola or whatever her name the, is. The one with the legendary. Show. Stang might be better than that one, but whatever. We're leaving it there for now. Centaur. Nice, normal, classic Gruul Commander. Stone Brow, Kroos, and Hero. 5 mana, 4, 4, Trample. Whenever a creature you control with Trample attacks, it gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. Very Gruul. Very Gruul, yeah. Uh, what The first thing I think of is you can play Brawn, which gives all your creatures Trample if it's in your graveyard. There are a couple of... An- like Trample Anthems. Trample Anthems that give your whole team Trample. And then maybe that's okay, but... I don't know. It's still really D tier. I think it's a D tier. Maybe top, top of D tier. It's just really boring. It doesn't not much to say about him. I don't like it. Well, this back is to Legends. Sanastian Falconer. A five mana four four. Taps for two colorless mana. Wait, this is another Legends commander that does something. How is it that the Gruul Legends commanders are so far like the most complex of any of them? So there's a card from um I don't, I don't first of all not to ignore your question I don't know. Moving on from that, there's a five mana four four that um, colorless creature that says tap for two mana from a uh, I want to say recent set but it's probably like four years old at this point, and that's a, so it's exactly the same text as this card except it's colorless and it's not legendary. Yeah, Kozilek's Channeler from... I'm glad you remember the name. Oath of the Gatewatch. Yes. Um, so that they stole this card's so, mojo. If you ever played Kozilek's Channeler and you thought, this is so awesome, I want to do this every game. You can play Sanastian Falconer. Because it's, it's kind of like Rada, but if it was like... I don't know. If it was it. made ten years before? Oh, wait, it was? Oh, okay. So, yeah. You cool with above staying? tier. Yeah. This is kind of like that in the way that it is a... Uh... Okay, it's not like that card at all, actually. I take it back. This is Svela, Ice Shaper. Um, notably, I'm not... Don't don't quote me on this, but I think this might be one of two or three snow uh, commanders. Like, commanders that have snow... Like, the snow border on them. The snow frame. Yeah, it's not very common. Jorn, I think, has that. And him. I don't they know of any the, other ones. Uh, Narfi, Betrayer King. Yeah. The I, zombie guy. And I really like the snow frame. I think it looks cool. It does look cool. Um, but that being said, I don't think this card is that crazy. Or very good, to say the least. He's a 3-mana 2-4. He has the ability to pay 3-mana tap and make a... An icy mana lift, so an artifact that taps for a mana, a snow mana to be fair, because it's a snow artifact. And then he has seven or eight mana, sorry, and tap it. And then you look at the top four, you look at the top four cards of your library, and you can cast a spell spell among them for free. Um, so he does do that thing where he's a he makes mana kind of, and he's a payoff for having lots of mana. So he does fit both roles. 
but they're both just kind of bad. It's very slow. I don't want to be paying three mana to tap into Ramping Growth. I mean, it's not even Ramping Growth, because it's an artifact that does it, but like... It's an artifact token. Ugh. So... I don't like him very much. D tier? I'm... I think I like it better than Stone. I think so, At least it's kind of interesting. Yeah, and if you get the mana, you can be like, I'm gonna cast a spell from the top of my deck. And you're like, okay, I, I hit my 5-drop. So this one, I think you used to have a Tongarth first mate deck, Spencer. Yeah, and I would always mis, uh, misname him. I'd always call him Tangrath, but that is not his name. It's Tongarth. So he's a 4-mana 5-5, five, five, can't be blocked ex- by more than one creature. Mm-hmm. And whenever an opponent attacks with one or more creatures, if he's tapped, you may have that opponent gain control of him until end of combat. If you do, choose a player or Planeswalker that opponent is attacking... Tongarth is also attacking that player Planeswalker. So, I'm. let me just take the reins here, okay? Um, and that's not a pun because he has, like, horns or whatever. Um, it, I'm just going to say it flat out. It's actually harder than you would expect to get this ability to work. Because you play this creature on 4 or 3 if you're lucky with a ramp, with ramp spell. And then it has to attack first before anyone can even take it. Yeah, so be tapped. Yep, it has to be tapped. So they have to, you know, pretty much if you're playing on curve, turn five be until, and if you went last, it's like everyone else's turn six. Mm-hmm. So it really is very slow unless you have some way to give him haste right away or a way to ramp him out. Um, and then it also requires your opponents to actually attack, which they might just not. I mean, it does have a little bit of politics in that way, but all you're really getting out of it is more damage on your opponents. That being said, he's a five, he's a four mana five, five, which is bigger than you normally get. So that's something, but I don't. I uh, I played him um, in a deck that I built specifically to not have any interaction because I wanted to. I just wanted to like um, not like mess with my opponents. I just wanted to make a deck that was like, okay, I'm not gonna target your stuff. You do what you need to do, and I'll just hit you and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and it wasn't it wasn't a bad deck or anything. It was fun to play, but I don't I don't think it's very powerful to say the least. Yeah, it doesn't seem. I think I'd play... It, it's, it doesn't really, like, drag you in any direction. It's just, like, a good stuff deck, I guess. Or, like, an, a, 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 a mid-range or an aggro deck. This might be harsh from us to a 4-mana 5-5 five, five with some upside, but it feels like a D-tier. It feels like a C or a D-tier, yeah. I'm gonna put it, like, here. Is it equal, or are you cool with that? Yeah, I think so. Tangarth. Um, one thing that Tangarth does do is... Can play the uh, the green hideaway land easy more easily, yeah. Because it requires you to have eight power in play or something. Yeah, you get to over halfway there. <laughs> okay, that's cringe. All right, now we got Tana the Bloodsower, another Spencer Cook commander. Yeah, I play this uh, with Tana and Ishai, um, but for the sake of this um, this tier list, we're going to be considering Tana as a either commander on its own or partnered with another card that would keep the deck to gruel colors Mm -hmm. so tana in a gruel commander deck as the commander somehow whether that's with another partner or just by herself or something or himself herself um eli you want to read 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 them so pretty simple two four mana two two trample whenever tana deals combat damage to a player you create that many one one green sapling creature tokens so i've played my partner a couple of times and usually it kind of seems like Tana's the backup plan to Ishai because you play Ishai first to like draw out yep. removal, and that's that's really good. And then you run out Tana and then like get like a Skull Clamp or I don't know like a Sword of Feast and Famine on yep. it and just make a bunch of Sapperlings. Or if you get an, an Ashon's Altar or something as yeah. like a payoff. So with from what I've seen, it's really good actually, and I'm pretty tempted to. Uh, Say maybe like an A tier because even just by itself, it's yeah does good stuff. And partner commanders get a buff; they they have that partner buff where it, where just by virtue of having partner, they get there a little bit better because you get to play them with another card. Mm-hmm. Um, the way I built my deck, like you were saying, Eli, it was built so like depending on the opening hand, you pretty much choose which four drop commander to play. Um, and yeah, when it's pretty much like you draw a skull clamp and you're like, okay, Ton is gonna be good. <laughs> Yeah, I think that was the first time I ever played that deck. Is my my hand was some lands, five lands, a two mana mana rock, and a skull clamp, and I was like, "This is perfect." Yep. Actually, interestingly enough, um, you can if you have the mana for it, 
you skull clamp the Tana, get in for three, and then you get one more yeah. token. Because skull clamp gives that. I mean, and the thing is, Tana has trample, so she scales well with if you put equipment on her or something, makes more sapperlings. Also, yeah. Um, I like Tana. I agree with you. I think she's not, not quite S tier, even though, you know, there's, we've had a cycle or a, a, a thing that we've been doing in a lot of our tier lists where like, there's like some really good, um, partner commander that's like a CDH partner and they like end up going in like a S tier. Mm-hmm. Tana is not quite that good. I don't think. Yeah. But, but we saw A tier, I think. Bottom of A tier. Sure. We'll, we'll put her there for now. Very cool card. And I could see playing like Tana and like some other you know, green or red um, partner card or something would be pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And we have a new commander, an uncommon from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. Before you read this, let me let me just say, I'm going to admit, I've never seen this card before. Okay, go ahead. Targnar, Demon Fang Knoll. Is a 2-mana two 2-2, two, two, pack tactics. Whenever he attacks, if you attacked with creatures with total power 6 or greater this combat, attacking creatures get plus 1, plus 0 on talent of turn. And four mana, double his power and toughness and tone turn. Uh, it's kind of like that, uh, like we were talking about Galia as like this uh, little cruel weenies commander. Mm-hmm. I guess you could do that with him as like an anthem. I don't know. It's two mana, but... Worse than Galia, I think. What do you think about that? Yeah. I think around there, maybe. I, I don't... I so when I when you started reading this card, I got um, flashbacks to this other card, which isn't a commander, but there's a green card in um, I think the Adventures of the Forgotten Realms set, which says, says something along the lines of um, it's like a green green two two for two or something, and it says like if you attack with like six power creatures, you like draw a card or something like that, and you can like give it more power or something. Oh for yeah, ability. the the werewolf. Yep, and I was just thinking, or that might be like a three three or something. It's a two mana three three. Yeah, and I was just thinking like. That's not a legendary creature, of course, but that card just, like, does what this does. I was just looking at this card, and I was like, oh, man, I hope it says draw a card. Yeah, and this one, uh, this was designed for, you know, they do this thing now where they have an uncommon cycle of... Legendary creatures? Well, dual-colored cards that are representing the draft archetype of the They're set. a signpost card is what we call them, yeah. So this is the signpost card for that, so it's just a, it's a symptom of that. It's like a gruel aggro or something, or, yeah. or go wide aggro. Maybe it's even worse than this. I was thinking it actually might be worse. It might be like D tier. It might be like... I mean, it's 2 mana 2-2, two, two, but I don't like it at all. I'm putting it like here. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I'm putting it I think way that's down right. there. I think you're right. Well, we're back to basics here with the Legends Commanders. Lady of the Mountain. The Lady of the Mountain. 6 mana, 5-5. Five, five. Which is strictly worse than 6 mana, 6-5. Six, but she's not really the Lady of the Mountain because it says her given name has been lost in the mists of time. Legend says that her silent vigil will one day be ended by the one who, pure of heart and spirit, calls out that name again. What's her name, Eli? Never mind, you're not pure of heart and I'm not, spirit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not gonna... If you, even if you say her name, it's not gonna save her. Now we've got uh, Thromok. I was gonna say Phylas. Kind of, kind of cruel, actually, because no magic player is pure of, is heart, pure of heart and spirit. So she's just doomed. Because they're the only people who would know about her. Yeah, maybe the only person that you could get would be like, you know, I'm gonna leave that there. We're not gonna we're not gonna go that direction. Um, moving on, we got a Hellion commander. Eli, this is for your tribal Hellion deck. No, it's not. Um, five mana zero zero with Devour X, where X is the number of creatures devoured this way. What that means is that when it as it comes into the play, you can sacrifice any number of creatures. That being X. And when you do, it enters with X counters, where X is the number of... Or X counters for each creature sacrificed this way. So if you sacrifice two creatures, it comes in with four counters, right? So this is a uh, math lesson in exponents, right? Yeah, this is a math lesson. I mean, and you know, maybe give this to your... your uh, four becomes 16. Yep. 5, 25. Give this to your, your teenage uh, or your, your middle school... Sun to teach him how exponents work. Power of twos. So this is very... It's a pretty simple thing. It's just... It's a big guy. But it's pretty cool. It's a cool card. It's the coolest way to do just a big, dumb creature, in my opinion. And if you're going to do, like, the the fling deck... Yeah. I don't think you could do better than throw 
And there's, I've, I, you know, I've, my, my buddy uh, has, I know someone who played a Throwmack deck, and they played it as a, it's a very powerful deck, actually. Do you remember Isaiah had mm-hmm. his uh, Throwmack deck? And it was, it was really strong, actually. Yeah. It was, um, I mean, that be, I mean, he played a lot of good cards in it, like Survival of the Fittest and stuff, to tutor out stuff that matters, but there are actually some really good payoffs for having a very big creature that don't involve just attacking with that creature. So stuff like um, Selvala, who taps for power equal to the, you know, your, your, Perhaps for the greatest power you control, or some other effects to do similar things. Um, Thormac actually is is kind of interesting. I don't think it's like insane, but it's. I almost Spencer. I I think I might want to put him in a tier just for the uh, the main reason being, it's hard to make just big creature feel functionally cool and unique and interesting. And I think that's uh, I think they did it with Thromach. So you're saying A tier because cool style points? Sure. I mean, I'll I'll put it there. Um, and it is kind of good. It is kind of good. Um, I I just want to be very clear and say I think it is probably a worse card than some of these B tier commanders. A worse commander. I think Maybe. so. I mean, I I am of the opinion that like just pure power and toughness isn't always great. It sometimes it is kind of boring. But there's a degree like there's a at what power and toughness is is it just really good like it, mm-hmm. when something gets to be like 20 or bigger like that's just that's so big it doesn't nothing else matters anymore yeah and i'm i'm imagining you doing things like uh giving your creatures haste and then like you make a bunch of tokens and then you like play throw mech and kill someone kind of thing when well, you got war storm surge you've got enters the battlefield kill someone recently sure. uh terror the, of the peaks the dragon now. yeah a lot of neat stuff you can do with power matters. So. I'll I will trust you on this one, okay, and put her put it there. But I wouldn't be surprised if it's worse than like it might there. be. But, but I'm I'm down, okay. Uh, I'll do it. Now we've got oh god, I don't have this card pulled up. No. Oh, it's the new one. The new one. Pull it up, Eli. We decided to go out on a limb and just do the. The new cards that haven't come out yet because they're just coming out too quickly. Yep. So this is a uh, this is a uh, commander that just came out from the new or just got spoiled from the new um, Eldritch or not the new what, what's the name of the set Eli? Innistrad Midnight Hunt. Yeah. So this is our this is the werewolf commander that everyone's been wanting for years. And he's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Tovalar Dire Overlord. He's a three mana three three human werewolf. Whenever a wolf or werewolf you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control three or more wolves and or werewolves, it becomes night. Then transform any number of human werewolves you control. And he has Daybound, which is the new set mechanic that Daybound, the side says, on your turn, if nobody casts spells, it flips to night. Right, Spencer? No, it says, it says, it's not your turn, it's the person whose turn it was it's okay okay so if your opponent plays two spells on their turn it flips or if you play two spells in your turn it flips it's confusing it's the new mechanic well the, the two spells flips it from night to day yeah day or oh, sorry no spells if a player plays no spells on their turn it flips mm-hmm. so it, it's different from the old um, werewolf effect because in the old effect, it, um, you could, for example, play two instants on your opponent's turn to flip it, whereas now you could it only works if they would play two cards yeah. on their turn. It's a very slight difference, but we haven't even read the whole card. Just show, read the last so half and then we'll talk about it. So he flips to his werewolf side, which becomes a 4-4, four, four, Tavalar, the Midnight Scourge. And whenever a wolf or werewolf you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. And he has the uh, Kessig Wolf run ability, X and Gruel, but it's just Wolf or Werewolf gains plus X plus O and Trample on Tone of Turn. So there's and, a lot going on with this card. Yeah, um, draws you some cards, uh, kind of has a way to flip your, your human werewolves, which is nice. That's the, the main thing that people wanted, because like the old werewolf mechanic is just, especially in Commander, it's, hard. it's really hard to keep on top of that. I kind of feel like Daybound, Nightbound, it, it is different, but it's going to be kind of similar to that, so I don't love it. Well, the thing that I that, that's, that's good about the design is that they introduced the new Daybound, Nightbound mechanic, but that effect doesn't work on the old werewolves. So mm-hmm. this is a commander that bridges that gap because it has the ability of um, it flips the werewolves 
according to the daybound nightbound thing, right? Yeah. So it, it does it bridges that. So it works in the old werewolves and the new werewolves. Yeah, and I I like uh, he draws you cards. Kessig Wolf Run is a really cool card. I mm-hmm. like it a lot. Um, I have no idea what I'm thinking, but it seems I'm all right. Thinking like B tier, maybe B tier. Sure, let's put them because I don't think you'd have to play like a bunch of bad cards in this deck. Like there are some decent wolves and werewolves even on its own it's just like a you attack someone you draw a card right on its yeah. own and you can and it's got a lot of abilities himself with his ability on his backside so how do you feel about how do you feel i'm upper side but where do you think maybe under borborygmos sure we'll do that for now um and i just want to say his uh his artwork for his back half when he's a werewolf He's a werewolf holding a sword, which, like, that feels a little extra to me. That feels like, gives me kind of vampire with a gun vibes. <laughs> like, you don't need a sword if you're a werewolf. You just claw them, You right? have You have swords, swords on, on your, your hands. hands. Yes. I'm, I'm following you. I'm following you. All right, well, that was a bit complicated. Let's move on to the next one. Tuknir, or Tuknir, Deathlock, is another Legends commander. It is red, red, green, green. For a 2-2 with flying. And it has Gruel tap. Target creature target creature gets plus two, plus two until, until out of turn. And I don't understand at all what this card is. Like I'm looking at this art and I don't I don't get it. Well, you see, Spencer, Tucknir is an explorer of the ether. Tucknir often discovers himself in the most unusual physical realms. Oh, so they're not he's not like a he's not on like the plane of existence that we're on. Look he's at, like in the Look Aether. at his helmet though. This is made of a triceratops and two other Oh, dinies. two other. Oh my god. So that's pretty cool. So you're saying this is your dinos this is a thematically a dinosaur commander. Or a dinosaur hunter commander. Tucknir does sound like a caveman name. I'm giving Tucknir a, a bad rating. Where, where do I put him, Eli? Just tell me. Above the Falconer. Okay. Because he's a 4-drop instead of a 6-drop. Yeah. Sure. Alright, now we've got... Is this a D&D card? What is this? No, this is from Commander Legends. Oh, okay. I do like Tuckneer better than this one, though, a little bit, Spencer. <laughs> just pers- not from, like, functional reasons, but... It's kind of cool. Bearclaw is just... When, it, when she attacks... She gets plus X, plus X until in a turn, where X is the greatest power among other creatures you control. And she's a 3-mana 2-2. That's super boring. This was clearly one of the designed for Commander Legends draft commanders. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking D tier. Yeah. I don't like her. She's boring. I have nothing to say about Tuya Bearclaw. I'm putting her... I'm putting her... I'm putting her... Here. Yeah. I don't like her. Sorry, not much to say about her. Now we got Ulashed, the Hate Seed. So let's see, four mana Gruel Commander. Yep. It's a Hydra. Comes into play with a plus one plus one counter on it for each other red creature you control, and a plus one plus one counter on it for each other green creature you control. And you can pay one mana, remove a plus one plus one counter from Ulash to either have Ulash deal one damage to target creature, or create a one one green Saperlin creature token. Fans of Commander Versus will know that Justin Parnell has an Ulash the Hate Seed deck, which is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think Ulash is okay. So I've known someone who's uh, played Ulash before, and their deck was was uh, pretty pretty solid. The way that they were they built it, it was pretty much a Perforos deck. So you kill everyone with Perforos by. Either making a bunch of tokens or Ulash making a couple tokens to deal more damage, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, if you want to build some sort of Perforos deck, you know, you can do worse than Ulash, I think. There, there are worse things to do. Um, because, you know, if you have all your tokens in play before you get your Perforos, you, it gets bigger. And if you don't have your tokens play before Perforos, then that means you're making tokens after you have Perforos, which is good. So four mana is a good price point. Ulash provides you some value. I'm thinking it's probably another B tier commander. Yeah. Oh, and also just to say, um, if you have green and red creatures, it does get two counters for each of those. So if they're like, yeah. They're, so they're both. So like, if you have like, if you have like, uh, you know, two other creatures, but they're both green and red, it comes with four counters. Yeah. Sure. I'll give it B tier. Um, above Daryl, down here, or you want more higher? What do you think? Above Daryl. Okay. Above Daryl. What's next, Eli? Oh my god. The other werewolf 
um, the other werewolf commander that no one liked. Yeah, poor Ulrich of the Kralin Horde. It's so five mana, four, four. ETBs or transforms into Ulrich. Uh, target creature gets plus four, plus four until end of turn. And it has the original werewolf ability where on each upkeep, if no spells were cast the last turn, you transform Ulrich of the Kralin Horde, and then he transforms into Ulrich Uncontested Alpha, which is a 6-6. Six, six. Whenever it transforms into Ulrich Uncontested Alpha, you may have it fight, target non-werewolf creature you don't control, and then on each upkeep, if a player casts two or more spells last turn, it flips back into the other Ulrich and then gives something plus four, plus four. I don't hate this as much as most people do. It doesn't seem that bad, but then it also doesn't do that much. I like fighting, you know, repeatable removal. That being said, it's not very consistent when it happens because your opponents have some agency over the uh, flipping. The flipping, yeah. But they probably don't want that to happen that often. Yeah, I mean, if it's flipping, it's it's going to kill something, and something that matters, probably. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's really cool. Um, I do like built-in... Built in, you know, removal on commanders, especially when it's not all you're getting. Um, because, you know, he does have that pump ability, which could matter for some reasons. You can do, like, the stuff, you can do, like, the greater good stuff where you pump a creature with, like, a 1 1, then you can greater good sack it and draw some cards. Yeah. Stuff like that. Um, there's reasons. I, I don't hate Ulrich. It's, it's kind of cool. Something else that I want to mention, Eli. So, if you look at the art on Ulrich, he's got this pendant or something on him, whatever this is. Which is kind of like the Abyssin symbol, except his own version of it, right? Am I wrong? Am I wrong here? Spencer, I... uh... Do you see it? N no, I'm not seeing... I don't Damn think it. it looks very much like the Abyssin's collar. <sighs> Fine. Just You saying because it's, like, circular? And it's got, like, a sword kind of through it, but it doesn't go through it? Alright, fine. Um, I just think it looks cool, okay? Yeah, he's a cool looking guy. All right, he's got um, a big axe. You feeling upper C tier, lower B tier? What are you thinking? I'm thinking maybe C tier, like uh, maybe around in between the Radas or something, or above stuff. Probably uh, above three mana Rada. Okay, I'm down with that. I would in between say. these guys. Yeah, and now we have. Another very new commander from the Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. Vrondis, Rage of Ancients. 5 mana, 5-4 five, Dragon Barbarian. He has Enrage. When he's dealt damage, you may create a 5-4 red and green dragon spirit creature token with whenever this creature deals damage, sacrifice it. And whenever you roll one or more dice, you may have Vrondis deal one damage to itself. So I'm going to say that that part, not that We're going to ignore that relevant, part. But... Enrage make a 5-4 is pretty good. You only really get the one swing with it, but that's... If you build around this, it's probably pretty easy to make a bunch of 5-4s. And you can do, like we said, stuff with uh, Warstorm Surge, yeah. Power of the Peaks. To start hitting good. people. Um, you got Power Matter stuff. Yep, and ways to make dragons. You can do stuff like Pyrohemia. Every turn, pay one red mana to make a 5-4. Pretty good. Yeah, or you can just... Get in with them. They're five fours. If they deal five damage and die, that's fine. You can just block with them. Mm -hmm. Probably makes it really hard to attack into you. Um, there's other re good reasons to play Vrondis. Like uh, I think even on the game nights. Um, oh god, what's J J uh, Joe? Is that the guy's name? Yep, Joe. Yeah, he played um, a card that I'm a big fan of, which is the spell that draws a card for each creature you control, and you gain four life for each creature with four power, um, four power or greater. Um, and this is a really good card with that because, you know, you just sit back with your guys and you get that 20 life or so and draw, like, five cards or six cards. Really awesome. Mm -hmm. So, and there's a lot of good cards like that that draw, you know, draw cards for your creatures you have or stuff like that. And I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I kind of like Rondis. Um, obviously, if, you know, they don't stick around forever like you were saying, but uh, it's kind of a cool card. Interesting, at least, I think. How do you feel about the B tier? Yeah, I'm, I'm down. I for, think he's really good. I think, um, I think like here-ish or maybe above Phylath? I think he might be better than uh, Phylath. I think so, yeah. I'm down with that. Five fours are really good. Pretty good power, yeah. Um, now we got Wart, the Raid Mother. This is a weird one, right? This is the this is a very not gruel 
It doesn't feel very This gruel. is your other gruel spell slinger commander, except yeah. Wart is really cringe and I hate it. I hate Wart the Raid Mother. Yeah? ETB creates it's six mana. For a 3-3. Three, three. And it makes two one ones. Red and green creatures. Yeah. Goblin and warriors. And each red or green instant or sorcery spell you cast has conspire. So when you cast that spell, you can tap two untapped creatures. You control that share a color with it. When you do that, you copy that spell and you can choose new targets for the copy. So I've, I've seen one person who had a wart deck and it's pretty much you play spells that make tokens and you double those and then you use those to... To double conspire more spells. So, I got a hot take here, and that's conspire is a terribly designed mechanic, and it's 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 uh so unintuitive and bad. That's my hot take here. I don't like conspire one bit. Yeah, I. It feels bad. It's a mechanic that feels bad. So Wart is kind of like a gruel spell slinger commander that forces you to play cards that are not conducive to a spell slinger deck you, like if you don't play them you just have your two tokens right and you can copy one thing yeah which is okay i guess but that being said wouldn't you, you could just play a spell that copies something instead of the six mana wart yeah i with my gruel spell slinger deck the way that i built it i have never even considered building it as a wart deck i think she is really bad how do you feel about this i don't know I'd put her in the D tier, Spencer. I I hate Ward. <laughs> She's icky. How do you feel about above this guy? Yeah, probably. Okay. She does stuff. It's unique. You know, if I'm going to give... Uh, throw Mac? Yeah, if I'm going to give him unique... Well, he's just... What he does is good, though. You know? Once... I mean, like, there are ways in Commander to make a lot of tokens quickly. There's that one uh, fungal sprouting, which makes a... Uh, one one for the equal uh, one one token is it fungal sprouting might be a different yeah, card i'm yeah. sure there's strong wart decks but it's something about it oh no i meant for <laughs> throw mac not wart <laughs> i was talking i was going back to throw mac okay wolfgar the ice wind at dale do you know what a dale is eli it's just a place in D D land it oh of ice wind dale sorry for some for, i read it as the ice wind dale and i was like what does that mean okay sorry um, five mana four four with melee, which is when it attacks. When this creature attacks, it gets plus one plus one until the end turn for each opponent you attacked this combat. And then it says if a creature you control attacking would cause a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. Eli, I I know you have something to say about this card. Well, this is an effect that myself and other people, you know, I I hate to do this, but some people had said this would be a cool ability for a Boros commander to give you like extra attack value. And I agree with that. So it, it is a little unfortunate that that wasn't the case. That's not to say they still couldn't do that. They could make something very similar, but it's not off theme in for gruel. it to be gruel. That'd be the second color I'd expect it in. Right. Yeah. So that being said, I think he's pretty cool. You could do some cool stuff. Double Inferno Titan triggers pretty neat double his own melee ability as well yeah things like uh this this um this commander here this this uh dragon one that makes a bunch of mana all the rata abilities they get doubled as well yeah i think that's very cool there's a lot of i think there's a lot of um uh it's any a creature you control attacking would cause a treat ability of a permanent you control so for example something like um oh god what's the the three mana enchantment that gets a counter when a creature you control attacks and if it has seven your creatures get plus five, plus five. Beastmaster Ascension. Beastmaster Ascension. That, that yeah. will, that'll get there off of four creatures attacking instead. I think it's actually pretty good. Mm-hmm. Especially if you... A lot of the things with the Gruul Commanders, which I notice, is that a lot of them want you to play a way to give them all haste. And mm-hmm. that's just like... A Gruul deck does that pretty well, and they yeah. want you to get haste. So, um, this with haste is obviously very good. Whenever you're playing, you're like... It curves into Titans... Well, the the red one, the green one's banned. Yeah, I'm not thinking of too many amazing things right now, but I can see it being very good. So that makes me want to put it actually pretty close with Rondus. Yeah, I think it's better. I honestly do. Uh, maybe it could be better. I think it's like top of B tier. Maybe that's a hot take here. I'm, I'm, I'm I think it's pretty good. Maybe. Sure, go for it. Yeah. Also, you can do equipment stuff like Sword of the Animist. 
like you have a sort of the animus on something like let, let's say for example you play your you know just a, a low draw a mana dork or something then you put a sort of the animus on it and then mm -hmm. you play wolfgar and then attack with that get two lands right away yeah that's cool yeah all right now we got xenagos god of the rebels god this of the classic everyone's seen xenagos it's probably the most generic gruel commander another one of the most common ones yeah very sure. common um 6-5 indestructible has that dual color god devotion text uh, 7 or less it's not a creature on combat another target creature you control gains haste and gets plus x plus x until end of turn where x is that creature's power haste is so good it's actually nuts like and this also having indestructible stopping it from dying to like anything mostly I mean it's not even a creature so it can't get path unless you have a lot of other you know colored permanent colored pips in play um, it's, uh, it's just very relevant. So, we, I was just talking about how haste is something you want a lot of the time, and this just does that. So, I think... Do you, you want to talk about Xenagos anything? I mean, it's obviously good, right? I don't think there's much to say, but I think this might be, uh... Our third S tier? third S tier. I think so. How do you feel about it? It's just it? undeniably, it's always good. I don't know where to put it, though. How do you feel about it in here? Maybe... Bottom of S tier. Sure, we'll do this for now. Xenagos is just... Always been powerful, always will be. Um, it's really good. Um, even, like, there's reasons that some cards really want haste. Like, for example, Verandas we were just talking about. Like, you play... I mean, you probably wouldn't play... I mean, oh, Verandas would... No, it's the beginning of combat. Wouldn't double it. But, mm -hmm. you know, they get big. And they hit people and they die. All right. Oh, and also works well with extra combats because... Um, it keeps the stats yep, the whole turn, keep it. and then you'll get to double it again, or mm -hmm. hit another creature as well. Yeah, very good. And last we have Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Or technically, Zalortha, Strength Incarnate, although a normal Zalortha card does not exist. They this only was a have, box top. They only have the Godzilla version, which is yeah, strange. It is a 7-3 dinosaur with Trample and Lethal Damage dealt two creatures you control is determined by their power rather than their toughness it's it's a little bit confusing but it pretty much just it, it pretty much just makes your creatures toughness or it makes so if you have a seven three it's a seven seven that's what it does mm -hmm. if you have a one five it's a one one <laughs> if you have a ten one it's a ten ten yeah so it's a five mana seven seven with trample effectively that's really that's pretty it's good. big and maybe some trickiness with that ability. I'm failing to think of that many cool things you can do with that. But uh, the, only, the only thing that comes to my mind is just ways that give it power. Just power. Like there's effects like, you know. Yeah. But that's not really anything super crazy. Power-based anthems become better. Usually um, usually things that just buff power aren't as good. Because they don't like keep it alive. But with yeah. this it does. You can get blown out by them killing your commander though. And then you got your guys die. Yeah, so it doesn't seem that amazing, but I guess it can let you play like it can let you play like um bo like damage based board wipes that don't kill your creatures because they all have so much power. If that makes sense. Yeah, maybe. But right. I don't think it's very good personally, and I'm not even in I'm not even interested in it either. It's kind no. of boring. What do you, to me. What do you think about uh, C tier? I think like here, honestly, I don't like it. Maybe up here. Yeah, maybe there. Maybe there. Yeah. Maybe there. Well, that, I think, is our last Gruel Commander, and we're, as you might be able to tell, we're getting, you know, as, as the tier list goes on, Eli and I get more and more winded. Um, There's too many commanders. There's a lot of cards. Um, let's take a moment just to go back and see if there's anything we want to change, as we always do. We can do it quickly. I'm not expecting too many changes, but... You know, I was surprised, Eli. I didn't. I was skeptical about Rada being an S tier because, like we said earlier, Eli, maybe not all tier, not all the colors are created equal, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't expect Rada to be an S tier commander, but after going through all the other ones, I, you know, I think it's. You're right. It is. I think it's just brutally efficient. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah. And I just want to give a little warning here. I forgot to mention it when we were talking about him, but Rondus is a bad, bad man. Yeah. Do not. Yeah. If you watched our last episode. Oh, yeah, if you watched the... Yeah, uh, stay away from Brondus. He's dangerous. It's probably good that we got him flanked by a werewolf and a bunch of plants. He gets enraged there. a yeah. lot. Um, that being said, you know, uh, 
I think I'm pretty happy with S and A tier. Unless maybe Thermac is worse, whatever, that's fine. We can leave them there. What do you, how do you feel about these? Any of these want to move around, Eli, in B tier? Do you think Daryl is better than some of these cards? Maybe. I mean, I'm sure there's really cool, strong things you could do with him. Uh, it's just personal preference. I don't don't like him that I don't much. Know if I see it. I'm just looking. Um, I want to put Roshi and Meander in D tier. Sure. Boom. Yeah. I don't like him. Um, anything else you care about here? Is Borborygmos the worst D tier commander? Yes. Yes. And legends, the legends. Uh, we had down some here. noble attempts to escape F tier yeah. this episode, but I don't think it's going to happen. Well, actually, it has happened already. Did it happen? We had a D tier legends. Commander? No, there was the uh, Azorius one that was like S tier or A tier. Oh yeah, whatever. Well, that's name. very rare. Yeah. That, that's that's the. Uh, Every yeah. once in a while, it turns out that one of the Legends Commanders is actually just broken. Well, they just didn't know what they were doing at all. So they're either, like, broken or do nothing, mm -hmm. pretty much. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, is there anything else? That's about all we got, I think, Eli. Is there anything else you want to talk about before we wrap it up? Going through all this, I've been uh, surprised by the level of diversity and complexity within Gruel. the Gruel color pair. Before going before this, it kind of felt like Gruel was very um, homogenized. Yeah, I'd like say Gruel smash, you know. But there's some there's some interesting things in here. Like for example, Eli, we were talking about Clothis here being a cool thing. Um, you know, you've got these. Uh, what else? All, I mean, obviously S tier. You know, kind of similar ish hit people. But there's also some some interesting like you know like Gallia is like a low to the ground kind of thing. You know, Grumgully is like a combo deck, I suppose. Um, you got the X spells commander, some other random stuff as well. There's some interesting stuff to do here, I'd say. Um, so this uh, this just reminded me of the the flavor text on Burning Tree Emissary. Mm -hmm. If anyone's ever read this, those who regard the Gruel as savage simpletons underestimate the subtle power of their shamans. And that's kind of what this reminds me. Like, you think of Gruul and you think, oh, it's just a bunch of dumb beater creatures. But really, they got some some subtle power. They got some subtle power and subtle wisdom in their yeah. in their ranks. So, you know, just there there there's a lot. I think that that, that speaks to the the Gruul horde. They, they are the horde, play. right? That is their. Uh, I think you're thinking of World of Warcraft. No, all of the all of the their clan. The clan. Sorry, I, this is a tangent but all of the two color guilds have a title so like the slesnia conclave the gruel clan the golgari swarm yeah something and i'd always forget them all they're not important. Warzov syndicate yeah very cool but uh i'll try to remember those from now on but i think that's about all we got right eli yeah thank you everyone for watching uh you can find us on twitter at edh takes you can please like the video please leave a comment and uh and argue with other people in the comments because then we have more comments. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, and uh, and subscribe. Appreciate ne that. Next, we will be doing either Is it or um, Rakdos as the other red commanders, not the green ones here. Mm -hmm. We're saving green for near the end. Um, so look forward to those. I believe not to spoil anything, but the, with those two uh, videos I just mentioned are going to have. Uh, gonna have a guest appearance as well We're planning on some guest appearances which i'm looking forward to because it means that i get to talk less yeah which is i already talk over i these... already talk over you enough so maybe we can have someone else talking these, over you these videos are are difficult they're they're easy and difficult they're they take a long time but they don't take any real pre-planning so overall yep. less time but they're fun so... to make though i'd say yeah, they are I'll fun be a, a bit exhausting sometimes. Yeah, and I like that we have a nice kind of spread in this one. This one, the different tiers are kind of balanced. Not out. too. Yeah, there's no none of the tiers went past the the middle. They went yeah, to two that's lines. That's always nice. All right. Well, thanks for listening, guys, and uh, see you later. Yeah. Bye.